So at this point, you guys are just going to start calling me Bert Houseboy because apparently that's all I know how to make videos on. But this is a full start. All right. So if you look at my inventory, I dropped uh, Earth's air or Earth's waters, bodies. Um, we're going to drop our airs and mines too, but that's just so we can get more from the Magic Combat Tutor. Uh, so we're getting rid of everything we don't need because we want to have 20 inventory spaces. Cast that airstrike on stuff as we're running around just to try and get 13 magic for fire strike later. Alright, so we're going to run over and sell our bronze sword so we can buy a pair of shears. Uh, there's other places to pick up shears, but they might be harder to get. So, bronze sword is plenty of gold. Drop the coins afterwards too. Now if you check my inventory space, after I drop that stamina potion that we clearly won't need, I'll have 20 perfect for the wool I have to pick up. So run on over to Farmer Fred. Start that quest. Uh, I'm going to start speeding some stuff up here, but yeah, you can see me cast an airstrike on stuff as I go. Uh, we need 20 balls of wool, and doing sheep shear actually nets you 1,000 crafting experience after you count in spinning the wool and collecting the quest rewards. So I'm going to time lapse this a little bit here. Uh, the purpose of this video is to give you like an actual start. There's been so much theory crafting. I know I have the levels for all this stuff, but I'm doing the numbers of things I'd have to do to hit all of these milestones. So just sit back and enjoy. Uh, this is, you know, it's like an actual day one. You're going to see me jump cut here too. I spin all my wool at once with tier 2 relics, so you're going to see me real quick jump cut. That's actually what I did to time out how long it takes me to do this. So let's grab our Draymond Staff. Uh, the Bronze Dagger gives us magic attack bonus, but... Draymond's staff is much, much higher. Also, deposit stuff we don't need. We want to keep the axe and the bread. But besides that, we don't need anything else. And we're going to want that inventory space later for Daddy's home, the start of the construction grind. So, cast some more airstrikes, finishing quests. At this point, run into the stronghold of security. You're going to want to make sure your two-factor authentication is set. Otherwise, it's going to prevent you from running through here, but this 10k cash is really important for what we're going to do next. So you see me running on through uh, the bread you should save for the third floor. There's one room with the catablepons right here with the spiders. You only get hit once in that second room. You should not get hit more than twice in there for large amounts. Now make sure you get 10 logs for planks we make later. You pick two up inside of one of the daddy's homerooms, and this is a really important step. Hammer, chisel, and upstairs, which you see me skip here, uh, you can get a knife upstairs in this general store. So we're going to run over, talk to Dude Man for Daddy's Home, uh, go down, tear apart, tear apart a guy's house. Please skip the cutscene. It takes a long, long time. Uh, don't forget to click the crate like I did. You'll see me do another jump cut, but make your planks, buy five bolts of cloth, buy the steel nails. Uh, there's enough in stock that they never dip below starting price. So you'll get some experience for building things here too. It's a little over 4K once you finish the quest. And everything he gives us is enough for our construction grind. So you see me hop on a fresh account here. Um, not really fresh, it was an old hardcore that I reverted when it died. Uh, we're gonna do the museum quiz for, we'll get us 20 Slayer and 20 Hunter. Really sorry about that flashing. Uh, so once we're done with this, Runelight makes it much, much easier. Now I have three methods for us to make our gold for the rest of the construction grind. This first one is best. We're going to fire strike tree spirits. So run on over and grab your fire staff. Could have sped this part up, but we're just going to stroll on through Varak. So let's talk about tree spirits for a bit. They used to be a random event. They were actually like really intimidating. Um, you'd just be AFK woodcutting and they'd show up and start attacking you and they were strong. Uh, we're, we're purposefully keeping our magic level at 13 before this so that they're as low a level as possible and have as little HP as possible. But they used to be really intimidating. Um, they have a pretty nice drop table though. Anyone who's made an Iron Man should be very, very aware of this. All the different tiers of axes you could want all the way from steel to rune. Uh, they drop a lot, a lot of nature runes. So the rune packs we're buying here is we need twice as many air as mined. And I'm doing this slow because I'm checking my cash stack. We're plenty good to get uh, 300 casts of fire strike. So now um, you see me almost forget to run to the bank. That would have slowed me down quite a bit. But I deposit a lot of stuff and uh, then we just teleport home and head on over to the fairy rings. So we're really trying to efficiently bank when it's close to us. 
and we want to make sure that we don't uh that we don't what is it waste our home teleport it's half an hour and that half an hour can be really meaningful since we don't have other teleports unlocked yet so bank clear your inventory only get out what you need and then home teleport and we're going to run southwest to that shed so yeah let me know how you're enjoying these videos this one i put a lot of time and a lot of effort into uh the bird houses are as many of you who've been watching know my biggest strategy for the starter leagues there's other things too i'm gonna really dwell on slayer for a lot of my grinding but bird houses are gonna be a big start especially because as soon as i can get to priftiness I want to have the hunter level to be able to catch crystal implings. Get a little nice stack of rune darts going before everyone else starts to get there. I think I think this will be a good strategy. Birdhouses are passive. They're every 50 minutes. So that's the value here. And the reason we need this cash stack is so we can buy a parlor and a workshop in our player-owned house. That costs 11k gold right there. So if we get lucky, we might get two rune axes and you can hold on to one for yourself. But... Really what it comes out to is you should make more than enough money to actually pay for all this stuff from the tree spirits you can kill. So run on down to the shed. As long as your Draymond staff is equipped, you'll head to Xanaris. Once you're in Xanaris, run southwest. Everyone's been here. Everyone who's a member has had to do Lost City. You know, we've all done our, our fairy tale quests to unlock fairy rings. So this should be familiar to you, but run southwest past Puro Puro. Get to the fairy ring. And I'll have the code on the screen for you. I think it was like BKQ or something. So, uh, yeah, we're almost there. Yep, BKQ. I don't know what I clicked on there. Some sort of teleportation. <laughs> okay, so this is a pretty place. And all we got to do is run down and chop a tree. And a tree spirit will show up. It might remind you of the actual Lost City quest when the angry tree spirit tries to fight you. And everyone just safe spots it with mage anyway, but... So chop this bad boy, something will show up to attack me. Mine is a really high level. Mine has 170 HP. So when I was doing my calculations for this, I imagined it was about five, uh, five kills per one of mine. We get about 326 GP per kill average if you break down all of the ratios. Um, if you break down the drop chances and what you can sell to stores for minimum, not minimum, but for low elk prices, what stores buy things for. Um, yeah, so it obviously is taking me a long time to kill these. These have over five times as much health as yours might. So we should be able to get 35 to 40 tree spirits killed. And it's really close to 11,500 expected earnings. Hopefully, hopefully you're lucky and get two rune axes. That'd just be splendid for anyone who comes down here and takes this method but this is much faster than the other grinds i was doing uh, i got a couple of snapdragons in my inventory too these guys are great for snapdragons they're one of the more common herbs on their drop table so i don't know if anyone would actually come here for it rather than just slowly stack up seeds over time but yeah snaps are pretty hard to come by so it's nice to see them all right so uh same thing i said before about having a lower level you see how long this is taking uh, the tree spirits, the first level of them are going to have 25 HP, and the second level are going to have 40 HP. Both of those are less than a quarter of how much I'm hitting. The lowest level ones are like almost a sixth. Uh, it's between one-fifth and one-sixth of the HP, so you'll get way more drops than I'm getting here. But I just used my runes about until I ran out to get a gauge on it, so really important that we try and keep our combat level low before we start this grind. So we're wrapping up here. I think I might kill one more after this. Yeah. So you see me stacking up on nature runes. Uh, level does not matter for these tree spirits. You're going to get those either way. The drop table is the same across the board. So it's really, really sweet. Again, if you're an Iron Man, you know about this place already. So we should get about 11.5k. Uh, you don't see that in my inventory. This is the only grind I pretended to do where I didn't actually do the whole grind. The second one is a woodcutting and fletching grind. This one's kind of long, so bear with it. Uh, I would not advise this one. Okay, we do a lot of wood cutting just to fletch and sell stuff. You're probably going to want to save more of your wood cutting for collecting construction materials. We'll have other ways to do fletching later, but man, this one was a pain to record. You'll see, but uh, all it is is it's cutting and fletching logs. 
So we're right away going to run to Bob's axes and get a steel axe. It's worth it for the grind at this point. So we do get a fairly high woodcutting and fletching level after this, but it's just there's better skills to train and it takes so much longer. I wanted to throw this in there because willow longbows unstrung are a decent way to make money, but Let's just run through the motions here and take a look at what I do. So get your steel axe from Bob. It's plenty worth our time now. Uh, you might notice there's a knife behind his hut. Don't get that one. Get the one above the Varrock General Store. So all around Lumbridge, we'll see regular trees. And I'll put the numbers up on the screen for what you have to do for this part of the grind. Um, we're going to start by making arrow shafts, which for me are going to be instant, so you'll see me jump cut again. So make 47 logs into arrow shafts and 66 unstrung longbows to sell to the store. So every time you see me jump cut, that's the, the time I would have saved from Relic 2. Alright, so here we go. I accidentally make short bows for my first couple <laughs> inventories, but yeah, just ignore me. So keep looking at the numbers on the screen. Those calcs were... Uh, Part of my preparation for this video, doing the different calculations for everything. I think that might be valuable for some of you that are really, you know, math and puzzle up minded like me. So for oaks, 41 short bows, 117 long bows. And you're going to make quite a bit of money off of these, but the willow long bows are when you really start make, making, your, making your earnings. So yeah, oaks and willows get a little more AFK because obviously you can get multiple logs. I think it's... uh. One out of eight chance to deplete the tree every time you chop a log. So sometimes you only get one, but I've also had full inventories out of a single tree. So, you know, I got my buddy over here who's chopping oaks with me. Might have just seen him say, bro, there. <laughs> Wondering why this dude's running around. I think one of those guys actually said, you have 85 woodcutting. What are you doing here? And I had to explain to him that I'm making a YouTube video. So good times, good times doing all this for doing all this for the good of the people got a bird nest here too um i think bird nests are most common in maple trees but if you get one definitely worth picking up i just didn't because i wanted the inventory space i don't know i don't need it i got plenty of money on this account uh so yeah we should be wrapping up on the oak grind soon i think like one more inventory and then we can move on to willows here so Again, this grind is really long. This is at five times speed, so if you want to go <laughs> stop it and find out the timing. Um, so we need to make 89 willow short bows before we can move on to the long bows. So we want to make 11.5k cash again so that we have the same calculations as what I did for the tree spirits. And we're going to have a thieving grind later on too that asks for the same amount of gold. So this is definitely the longest part. Oaks are not fast. And with my 85 wood cutting and this steel hatchet, the steel hatchet is still just so, so slow. Do not do this option. I'm just showing it off because it's something some of you might want to do. Um, you'll level up pretty far in wood cutting, but I just, there's easier ways. So here we go. You'll see my cash stack slowly rising. I think I have a buddy from my clan show up in a little bit. We'll see when he gets here. Uh, yeah, guy just got the infernal cape too, so... I'm sure he wanted to come show it off for a YouTube video, but the clan's been pretty supportive. They all, you know, I'll, I'll post in our general chat. and Yeah, so here's a guy that's woodcutting, and he explained to me he's doing, like, the one chunk man thing. So you might have seen YouTube videos on that. I'm just like, you know, there's better places to do this, right? I'm just doing it for a video. And he said, yeah, I'm doing the one chunk man challenge. So if you want to check that out, there's all sorts of YouTubers. I, I leave and give him his trees back, just trying to be a nice guy. Um takes long enough to chop these anyway. It's not like the runs are really costing me too much time. So yeah, there's two good locations for this. East by the Furnace is the closest to the general store. But over here by the pond, there's six willow trees as well. So those willow trees are going to be better when you're doing in-between stuff for the thieving grind that comes next. But we'll get to that little uh, strategy conversation in a little bit. So yeah, let's just enjoy the scenery a little bit. How much time do you get to spend in Lumbridge? I mean... During leagues, we're going to get to wander around these places a lot. I, uh, <laughs> I'll occasionally just turn on all of those Ian Taylor songs just on, a, just on a shuffle when I don't really feel like listening to something with lyrics. Just bring back so many memories. If you caught in the last video me and Nick did, we've been playing this game since, I think, I think 2003. 
So 17 years, it was either 2001 or 2003. I'm trying to remember. It'd be third grade for me. So yeah, I think that was 2001. Like November 2001 is when me and my brother started playing. So I think we were around for party hat drops, but had no idea what we were doing. We were young kids, but it was just getting popular. All right, here's the buddy from my clan. Uh, this is Mia Inferno. Obviously, <laughs> rocking all the expensive gear you can find. Um, if you want to check out my clan, it's Infuse RS. You can go check them out on the forums to apply. We do a lot of PVM, a lot of uh, Raids 1. We're starting to try and to get into TOB so we can teach people TOB. Uh, it's just really cool. We do community events, um, boss of the week, skill of the week, where you grind out as hard as you can for a week on a piece of content. Everyone buys in a little bit. and you know the, the mindset for all the events is just how can we make the clan get higher stats? How can we make the clan have more gold, better gear? Um, it's just cool stuff. The, the leadership in the clan is interactive, fun to talk to. Um, yeah, everyone's just really helpful and it's a, it's a pretty positive community. So it's worth checking out. I don't have my own CC. I don't really want my own CC. I'm here for the community part of it. So it just makes the game more fun. Should be my last inventory. I think, um, yeah, looking at my cash stack, I'm pretty sure this is where I finish up. So the, the last grind we're going to look at is a thieving grind. So if you're still here to this part of the video, this is a little better than the woodcutting one, in my opinion. Uh, it's a little bit of a hybrid. So the idea here is we're going to use the loot table of ham members selling some of the iron and steel items to get our cash. So while we're taking damage from pickpocketing, we'll weave in some woodcutting and fletching too. So this is a really well-rounded way to boost some of your stats. Uh, you can get a little stack of bronze and steel arrows too, but it's not as fast as the tree spirit, not even close. And you'll see I took off my graceful because if you're actually doing this, you're going to want to collect the ham robes and get them equipped. Gives you a better chance not getting kicked out. So, all right, home telly again. So in all of these methods, we eventually home telly. First thing we do is pickpocket 61 men. You will take too much damage here. You will want your axe in your inventory for the start of this. I should have had the knife on me but forgot about it. But you would want that on you. Uh, clearly this is faster for me than it would be for a fresh account because a fresh account, you know, you're not going to have the thieving level. I'm like 79, I think right now we're going to do the female hand members all the way because they have the same loot table and with the higher success rate, even though they give slightly less EXP, you actually end up with higher experience per hour. So if you're looking at my inventory, the things I'm keeping are the iron pick, steel pick, steel dagger, and steel ax. And then, of course, opening the, the cash bags, polishing the buttons, cleaning grimy guam leaves, uh, really just trying to be efficient about this. And then I'll run to the general store when I'm getting close to full. Um, you might want to hold on to a steel hatchet so you didn't have to buy one from Bob for this. And then also a steel pickaxe. I don't know when we're going to upgrade those, so we might as well just get them and hold on to them now. But yeah, we're just, again, running through the motions here. Uh... I have an easy clue in my banker. You probably would have seen me get a handful of those. These are great for farming easy clue scrolls. If you're doing Asgarnia, uh, easy clue scrolls are going to be excellent. So if you're doing Asgarnia, uh, you might want to come back here and actually use it to get godbook pages or whatever. I don't know. Um, so when you're low on HP, if you do start getting hit quite a bit, just head on up and start chopping trees. You're still close to the general store. Heal yourself back up to full. It's going to happen a lot on a fresh account but as soon as we start getting into those 50s and 60s for thieving we might get we might get to like 45 by the time you have enough money here uh, i didn't actually do the calcs on the thieving because it's so hard to predict but it does come out to if you save the items i showed you uh, it does come out to at least master farmers and about 10 gold per thieving so <sighs> we're getting there we're getting there this point you're probably gathering yes tree spirit is the best um the only problem with the tree spirit is that you just don't get that much out of it so selling stuff we're gonna have to go for one more run all right so i think this is three or four full inventories but again we'd stop and do the fletching grind in between this which is fine nice well-rounded abilities is what we're what we're looking for but 
the goal of this video is to get to bird birdhouses as fast as possible. So tree spirits by far the fastest, but you only get a few magic levels and you don't actually scale your magic experience when you're fighting things in the Enchanted Valley. So you'll always just get basically the splash experience. All right, we're almost done. Just gonna fill a few more inventory slots to make sure I have enough cash. And I'm running up. So here we go, we're about to start the construction grind. So you'll see me pick back up with uh, about that 11.5K in my inventory. So grab the following, get your cash stack, hammer, saw, house telly, 10 oak planks, eight regular planks, your stack of mithril nails, and four steel bars. So you can just watch the screen or you can go back and listen to what I just said. Um, it's basically just to do one good full construction trip, and this is enough to get you to 25 after the daddy's home quest. All right, so we have just enough inventory space to make this work. One extra, just one extra. So then we're going to use one of our home tellies that we got from Tat daddy's home to go to our Brimhaven house. All right, and you're going to want to enter in building mode. So that's the first thing I think I switched to. Uh, my house is already kind of full. I got my fancy pool. So uh, it costs 11 k to build the parlor and the workshop. You're going to build two wooden bookcases, which do require the nails. You're going to build a repair bench in the workshop, and you're going to build two of the crafting table one, that clockwork building station. And make sure you do it on the sidewall one, not the one in the center of the room. So we'll take a look at that when we get to the get to the skeletons for building, but... Yeah, run over and build two bookcases. So with the five times experience, it's just a good use of those planks you got for free. We have more sitting in our bank. We'll use them at some point, I'm sure, for other content in the game. But we will need to get to 44 construction. There's going to be a follow-up video to this about dig site pendant. There's no good way to get a necklace mold until you get 44 construction. So we will continue the cash grind and... You know what? Tree spirits all the way, right? So we might just keep doing that more to train our magic. But again, it just it doesn't feel like I'm getting a lot out of it. Uh, it might be it might be just better to continue the thieving grind and uh, eventually move on to guards or something. So you see me almost accidentally build in the center one. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. This ain't the upgrade one. So then I run over and do the sidewall. So I left that clip in there just because I'm like, I want to make sure people don't make that mistake that I almost just made. The big deal is if you run out of oak planks, that's when that becomes a problem. So we need to make sure this is built with our 25 construction, which you should have just hit, making that, making that workbench the second time. So we're going to run north to the charter traders. We're going to get our glass blowing pipe so we don't have to find one again. That's going to be nice for a crafting grind later. But also get a soda ash and a bucket of sand. All right, this part's important. Talk to the cart driver. Do not quick pay. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot more money. You can use the furnace inside of Shiloh Village for 20 gold. And having all that extra money left over is really going to help us out. So once you're done with that, upgrade. Make your clockworks. Just watch the video here. You can stop when you need to. I kind of rushed this part because this is when it kind of all comes together. The rest of this is self-explanatory. Uh, really, it's... It's important for us to get the four birdhouses built, but after that, everyone should kind of know what they're doing if you've ever done a birdhouse run before. So I buy 40 hop seeds. Uh, they're cheap. 100 cash, 100 gold cash will buy you 20 of each as long as they're full in stock in the store. Now unlock the mush trees while you're at these locations. I wrap up the video by going to House on the Hill. It's not necessary, but you would be silly not to. All right, so... There's the last birdhouse, and I run east. So I really appreciate it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. A lot of work went into it. And uh, yeah, I just hope you guys are enjoying the channel and looking forward to leagues as much as I am. So stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't. See you guys later.